James Mullen is James the Wine Guy. This is an introduction to my interview that I conducted with Rebecca Robinson. She is the executive director of ZAP, which is Zinfandel Advocates and Producers. And uh, for me, I, I will tell you, due to technical difficulties, it's going to be an audio interview. So I just want to let you know before uh, you delve any further, unless you don't want to watch that or listen to a great interview. And it's something that I really didn't want to just uh, do over again. There are technical difficulties that I've yet to solve. and uh, But I want people on my video channel. It's really important to highlight and to talk about. Now, Rebecca gives a great introduction in terms of Zap's history. She focuses in on the new venue in the Presidia and talks about the new format of tasting. I think it's going to be really, really well done. I'm excited about it. I've been a big supporter of Zap for many years, and I've known Rebecca for about eight years, and I think she's a, a great leader, uh, executive director of Zap. So here we go. Stay tuned. Thank you so much. Hi, this is James Melendez, James the Wine Guy. Today I have a very special guest. I'm very excited about this. I have Rebecca Robinson from Zap. She's the executive director who has spent a good portion of her life, I would say 24 years, if I'm not mistaken, in the wine industry, wine trade, and has made Zap into this incredible nonprofit organization that is promoting the beautiful grape that I love so much, Zinfandel. Thank you so much for having, you know, for being available to talk with me today, Rebecca. I really appreciate that. It's such a pleasure to be with you, James. Thank you. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm, I'm such a fan of Zap, as you know. And, uh, you know, I just find that it has such a unique um, combination of producers and advocates. And uh, it's a nonprofit. How did this evolution happen? How did Zap come to be? Well, back in the day, in 1991, you had a group of Zinfandel producers who said, we really want to recognize Zinfandel, the wine we love, as a world-class wine. And we're going to get together with the advocates, the consumers, the people who drink the wine, and we are going to celebrate this history and legacy together. And that's how the A in ZAP came to be, is bringing in the advocates. Sure. And so it's the Zinfandel advocates and producers. Okay. Now, in 2014, we have something very exciting happening, which is an evolution and how the ZAP experience uh, in person is going to unfold. Um, traditionally, it's been held at Fort Mason. And uh, I think last year, if I'm not mistaken, Exhibition Center in San Francisco, right? Yes, we, uh, we moved the event uh, a couple of years ago and really did a lot of soul searching, a lot of uh, surveying and really asking both the producers and the public who attended the event, what is it that you're really looking for? And we discovered that they missed Fort Mason. They missed the bay. They missed that charm. Uh, at the same time, what we also wanted to move to was a more intimate, more accessible experience that wasn't a monolithic tasting that was one-dimensional, but that had aspects to it where people could explore. They could create their own agenda. They could learn. They could just take off in the world of Zinfandel in a variety of ways. And so that's what we've done. We have on Saturday, which again is the most the event that we're most known for, mm -hmm. we have three different tasting tracks. One is terroir, one is reserve and barrel, and one is sensory. Terroir really dials into what is so important about Zinfandel, which is regional diversity. The fact that it is grown in Sonoma and Napa and Paso Robles and up in Rock Pile and Dry Creek and in Lodi. Those are such important regions for Zinfandel. And so consumers will have a chance to taste the wine from those regions and learn what is it that I love about Sierra Foothills wines as opposed to Rock Pile wines and, you know, what are the different characteristics of those? And then in Barrel and Reserve, a different track in a different building, they'll have the chance to taste those that first out of the out of the gate wine, uh, barrel in barrel. It was one of those things that Zap has always been known for as a barrel tasting, and so we're keeping that. And of course, there'll be some reserve wines, uh, and again, that access to the winemaker, uh, the the flow of it is still there, but it's just on a smaller scale. And then, of course, in sensory, it's something new, something fresh. We've got 80 winemakers there. We've got different food flavors that we're going to be experiencing. So what is it about umami 
that you know incorporates into Zinfandel, and mm-hmm. what is it? Why is it that uh, you know I like one flavor over the other? Those are all different components that that people will have a chance to taste in a walk around, very interactive forum. Wonderful, and one of my favorite events is your Thursday event, Epicuria, which I think is a fantastic way of highlighting the versatility of Zinfandel. Yes, Epicuria is absolutely you know a fan favorite, no question about it. Thirty wineries paired with thirty restaurants. The restaurant really takes their their uh, role seriously. You know, figuring out exactly what is it that brings out the best in a particular wine and vice versa. And so you have a great opportunity to mix and to match, uh, and it's really a tremendous event. I have to say, though, by the time that this runs, I think the event is probably going to be sold out uh, because of its popularity. Okay. That's a good thing, right? I think a lot of people (laughs) hope to be in that position. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good, good. Well, tell me, um, you know, how did this happen? How the evolution of your 2014 experience, how did this come about? Well, we really said that, you know, we we think that, that there is an evolution happening in wine tasting. And, you know, consumers are really looking for something more than just, I want to go and taste wine. I want to have an experience. I want to have interaction. And I want to learn something. You know, we, we all have access to such more information. But it's the context. It's the importance of learning about it to, to enhance our experience, really. That's what it's all about. You know, discovering um, what it is that we like about a particular wine. Uh, so that we can share that with our friends. I mean, that's always been part of the Zap experience is that sharing and that interaction. And people will still have that, but we're breaking it out into more accessible components. For example, there, the trade has its own separate tasting on a different day. Okay. And so, again, that just frees things up a little bit more for the public and the wine lovers to come and enjoy. Sure, sure. And, uh, you know, tell me about the transportation and, and the venue. I think the venue is going to be fabulous. The Presidio is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. The Presidio is really such an iconic historical landmark in San Francisco. And we've got incredible views of the Golden Gate, but it's combined with wonderful venues that lend themselves very nicely to tasting and they're all within very close proximity on the main post. So we're going to have... Uh, we're going to have shuttles that take you from building to building. If you want to walk, it's less than a five-minute walk. Uh, public transportation is very accessible at the Presidio. So it really has a lot of great elements uh, that we think are going to enhance people's uh people stay while they're with us. Okay. And I'm completely amazed all the time how Zinfandel has, I think, grown in terms of its, um, first of all, developed beautiful sculpted wines, uh, an evolution in the uh, Zinfandel wine itself. Uh, That is, I think, you know, I think people think of Zinfandel, unfortunately, as just being white Zinfandel or um, maybe pair them together, which is not absolutely true in terms of, uh, you know, vinified uh, Zinfandel um, in terms of the, the artistic art form that we, we see today from Rockpile or Lodi or uh, from wherever it comes in California and also other places, New Mexico, Arizona, Okanagan Valley, um, Washington, Oregon, Israel, and so forth. So I think that this is becoming truly, though it's not a classic uh, international variety, it, it is in many other ways. And I think that's the exciting thing about it. So I see a, um, you know, a bubbling up, not just in the United States, not just in California. So it's not just a California grape. It's to be shared throughout the country. And uh, I know that Zinfandel is exported as well. Tell me more about my perception. Is it true that Zinfandel is growing its audience? I absolutely agree with you, and I think that one of the tests is that it is being planted in other wine regions around the world. I think that that's really significant. Uh, you know, from the very beginning, you know, the popularity of white Zinfandel was an absolute blessing because it helped save those old vine vineyards that are so important to the classic nature of the varietal. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it was also a challenge because you know people would go in and they'd say, "I want a Zinfandel," and they get something pink, or they get something red, and they weren't sure yeah. what 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 is this, you know. Sure. So there was a need to educate people. So you know that's part of what we've been doing the last two decades. And in addition to that, we have been all around the world. We've had a 
privilege of, you know, again, we saw each other up in, up uh, on our way to Canada, and uh, we had Zinfandel up in Canada, and, you know, they love the flavors of Zinfandel up in, in that region, but they also love the fact that it pairs so well with the foods that they eat. And it's true even in Japan. We had a fantastic seminar and tasting in Japan this last year. And, you know, who says that Zinfandel can't go, um, is a perfect pairing with sushi. I love it. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And so, you know, there's that, uh, you know, mixing things up a little bit. And, you know, again, it goes to, I think, you know, the whole nature of, you know, there aren't any rules except you know, love what you drink and drink what you love. Sure. Uh, so, you know, that's part of what we're talking about as well when we talk about the experience and we talk about what we're doing here in San Francisco in January is sharing that love and that passion with people. I love that Zinfandel is absolutely uniquely identifiable. There is no guesswork when you have a glass of Zinfandel. I have one right here, actually, <laughs> an, an old vine. And, um, you know, you know that you're tasting Zinfandel. You're not tasting Pinot Noir, Cabernet Franc. You're not tasting Sangiovese. You're definitely tasting Zinfandel. And that's a beautiful uh, characteristic of Zinfandel. I think it's, um, you know, it's something that's, you know, both stylistically, you can have so many different variations, a lighter style to a, a much more heavier style. You can do a dessert wine with this as well. And uh, I think that's a beauty of Zinfandel is that it's so approachable. It's um, something that, first of all, I, I can say from the producer side, it's actually really difficult in many ways, especially towards the end of uh, the, the season, to grow uh, or at least to worry about the, um, the, the clusters. Uh, but, you know, I think it's a fantastic wine when it's, uh, you know, completely in the bottle. And uh, we, we luckily have had so many great vintages in the past decade, decade and a half. Uh, but for me, I, I often also think about uh, Zinfandel internationalizing and getting that, uh, going back to that point of, you know, finding that greater audience and grab. Um, has Zinfandel been served at the White House? Well, rumor has it, absolutely. And, you know, certainly Zinfandel producers have been at the White House because we actually had the honor of touring with one of the head ushers there and getting an insider's uh, peek even into the kitchen. Uh, I can't name names, but uh, I think that, you know, we could go back and do some research for your listeners. And uh, I think the answer would definitely be yes. And, you know, again, it goes to, you know, really uh, the appreciation for, uh, you know, what we do here in this country. And, you know, Zinfandel is the benchmark grape for California. There is, uh, you know, a wonderful production of Cabernet and Pinot Noir that is done. But let's face it, the history and the legacy for those grapes is in Europe. The history and legacy for Zinfandel is California. And so, again, that really goes to that celebration of, you know, hometown pride, if you will. Sure, absolutely. And uh, I'm also noticing in, the, in um, my fellow wine writers are writing about Zinfandel more often than ever. People are uh, talking on Twitter more about Zinfandel. I see many more videos. Is that, a, a, is that just my perception or is that really true where I'm seeing a lot of people in the uh, writing, wine writing uh, marketplace talking more about Zinfandel? I think that's absolutely right. We've really seen um, a great surge, uh, especially among some of the uh, major wine patients, uh, taking a look at Zinfandel and saying, you know, there is so much more to this varietal and what's happening uh, with winemaking uh, for Zinfandel. And one of the things, too, that's happening is we have a whole new generation of winemakers that, that's coming on board. And, you know, they're excited about the grape and about what can be done as winemakers. And so writers are taking a look at that. Uh, and I think, you know, again, James, it goes to, you know, what we're all trying to do, which, you know, again, what, what you're doing is such a, a great service to folks talking about, um, you know, the approachability of wines in general and Zinfandel specifically. Uh, and so I think that, you know, you've got that, you've got the, the print publications, you've got just more information out there. And so it's really important for people to be able to, you know, have a, an understanding and, and figure out, you know, what is it that's important to them and those tools. And that's, you know, part of what Zinfandel uh, Advocates and Producers is all about. Okay. Any closing comments or thoughts or anybody who's maybe on the fence about going to uh, Zap 2014? Uh, what, what might you say? What would lure somebody in? Well, I think, 
and it's the it's the wine itself isn't it it's that wonderful expression of the grape and it's going to be a lot of fun you're going to have such a great time interacting um, with the vintners uh, you know one of the things again with zap is that we do have the winemakers who are there they want to share their wines with folks uh, you've got the different tracks that you can have fun with uh, and you know again create your own agenda so it's a lot of fun I think that uh, the Presidio is going to be a great venue for us, and we look forward to people coming out and uh, experiencing Zinfandel with us. Very exciting. Um, I would say, Rebecca, too, that I just want to add on that I'm, of course, a huge um, supporter of Zap, and I do, I do believe that without Zap, we wouldn't have Zinfandel as prominently placed today in the marketplace, and I think this is a big accolade to the entire team, to yourself, and uh, you know, I think it's always exciting because it's almost that hurrah when you get to Zap and uh, the Zap tasting experience and being able to say, okay, this is why it's done. This is why all the hard work and the advocacy takes place is to enjoy what's here. So uh, big uh, kudos to you and to Zap and to everyone involved. Well, and thank you, James, for that, because it is the support of our members that makes it happen, both our advocates and our producers, and also the recognition of what you're doing. So, uh, again, look forward to it, and uh, here's to Zinfandel. All right. Cheers and salute.